G'day guys, it's Dave Tran here from Guitar Zero to Hero. Now, what did all those songs have in common? Well, they were all built off the same five chord shapes. Now, these five chord shapes are what I like to call the singer-songwriter chords. And these are five chord shapes that every guitarist needs to know. With these five chord shapes, any guitarist at any skill level, even if you're just starting out, can write their own songs. Now, in this video, I'm gonna teach you the five singer-songwriter chords as well as how to use those chords to write your own songs. Now you'll see a lot of famous artists, Ed Sheeran is one notable example, who like to use these singer-songwriter chords. And there's three reasons why these singer-songwriter chords are so good. First reason, they're easy to play. Second reason, they sound great together. And the third reason is that they sound great on the acoustic guitar. The first chord shape is a G. That's nice and easy. The second chord shape is a C add nine. Now this is based around a C chord, so you can play a C chord if you want to, but the C add nine is a really good variation for singer-songwriters. So to play that, it's basically the shape of a G chord, except you move your index and middle finger down one string, and you don't want to hit the sixth string. That's C add nine. Our third singer-songwriter chord is a D. Now with the D chord, you can also use D slash F sharp here as a variation. If you want to make it sound a bit fuller, just take your thumb, reach over the top, hit the second fret of the sixth string, and you can hit all the strings, and that's D slash F sharp. If you want to make that D chord sound a bit fuller. Our fourth singer-songwriter chord is an E minor seven. So it's based around an E minor, you can play an E minor just by itself if you want to, but to play the E minor seven, ring and pinky finger go on the third frets of the first and second strings, index and middle on the second frets of the fourth and fifth string. And our fifth singer-songwriter chord is an A7 sus4. So to play that, your index and middle finger come down one string from that E minor seven. And we're gonna play from the fifth string onwards, and you keep your ring and pinky fingers on the third fret. So to recap the five singer-songwriter chords, we have a G, we have a C add nine, we have a D, E minor seven, and an A seven sus four. Now one really important thing to note is that for all these chord shapes, your ring finger is always gonna be on the third fret of the second string. Now having that ring finger there the whole time for all these chord shapes means that you can use it almost as an anchor point for chord transitions. Never ever lift this ring finger if you're playing these chord shapes because there's no need to. They all have that ring finger on the third fret. So you'll move all your other fingers around that one finger. Use it as a pivot point. All right, so how do we actually use these singer-songwriter chords to write a song? Now, every song out there is built up from chord progressions. Now, a chord progression is a combination of chords, anywhere from two to six to 10 chords, but typically anywhere between two and four chords. And those chords are repeated again and again, and that's what makes up a chord progression. Now, chord progressions change from different parts of the song. For example, in a verse, you might have a different chord progression to the chorus. So it's as simple as basically selecting a bunch of chords, anywhere from two to four is a good place to start, and using that as your basis for a chord progression. And you can apply a finger picking pattern or a strumming pattern to that chord progression. So I'm gonna use a G, and I'm gonna to go to a D, and then I'm gonna to go to an E minor seven, and then I'm gonna end on a C. I've just created that up the top of my head. I've just picked four chords. Now, one thing you wanna consider is ideally you should start with either the G chord or ideally start with the E minor seven chord. Those two chords are good starting points for any of your chord progressions. I'm not gonna go into the musical theory mumbo jumbo of why, but they're the most pleasing for the ear. So start there. That's not to say you can't use any of the other chords to start your chord progressions. That's totally fine as well, but the G and the E minor seven are the best sounding. So going back to my chord progression, I have the G, 
the D, E minor seven, and C add nine. I'm just gonna use a really easy strumming pattern here. If you wanna write a song, just lay down the chords first, and then you can hum your vocal melody or your lyrics on top. Let's start with something basic. So I'm gonna go down, 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 up. Now maybe I wanna make things a little more basic. Let's go with two chords to create a two chord chord progression. I'm gonna go G and then I'm gonna to go to my E minor seven. So I might hold out the chords a little longer here. Let's play around. Now let's maybe try something with three chords. I'm gonna start with an E minor seven here. Then I might go D and then I'll end on the C add nine. But generally, if you're playing in 4-4 four, four timing, ideally what you wanna hear is groups of four. But we're playing with three chords, so what I'm gonna do actually is one strumming pattern for this E minor seven, one strumming pattern for this D, and two strumming patterns for the C add nine. So there you go, I've just created three chord progressions using those singer-songwriter chords. And you can just hum a melody on top, you know, just play those chords, see what sounds right. If you've got some nice lyrics, try singing something on top of them. But you're not just limited to that. What you can do, especially if you're a singer and that particular key doesn't suit you too well, is use a capo. Now you can put the capo anywhere you like, anywhere that makes it maybe more comfortable for you to sing and just use the same chord shapes. The shapes remain exactly the same, you're just playing relative to the capo. And you can just move it up and down to whatever suits your voice or whatever sounds good to your ear. Let's say we wanna change the feel of the song a little bit. Well, instead of strumming, we can just finger pick. So I'm just gonna take that same chord progression that I came up with before, and I'm just gonna finger pick it instead. So there you have it guys, the five singer-songwriter chords that make it super easy to write your own songs no matter what skill level you're at. The possibilities are literally endless. So be sure to play around with those chord shapes, use a capo, experiment, and see how you go. Hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Be sure to hit that like button, hit subscribe, and click the little notification bell as well so that you don't miss out on my updates. Leave your thoughts, comments, and questions below, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.